It was not NATO expansion or Western warmongering that pushed Russia to invade. It was Western weakness that convinced Putin he could get away with attempting to swallow Ukraine. He saw America as too internally divided and distracted, and Europe as too bureaucratic and soft to stop him. And sadly, I have to say, he wasn't wrong. Former United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley gave a major foreign policy speech in London earlier today. She talked in detail about the repercussions of the president's botched Afghanistan withdrawal. She tied that failure to Putin's decision to invade Ukraine. Recent Fox News polls show voters giving Biden low marks on his handling of exiting Afghanistan. The latest Gallup survey on the U.S. standing in the, on the world stage shows most Americans feel world leaders don't respect President Biden. 58 percent. That's a big number. Nikki Haley, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., former Republican governor of South Carolina, joins us now from London, fresh off that speech. So, Ambassador Haley, as you're talking about that, I can just imagine as we enter way beyond 100 days in this war, people are also looking to see, well, is this the president to help that end? Well, you know, I think we, you know, we worked with the policy exchange and we spoke, you know, a lot of British leaders came to hear the speech. And what I was basically focusing on was, you know, we don't have time for distraction. We've been distracted long enough. At the end of the day, we have a clear issue at hand. It's not the Ukraine-Russian war. It's the Chinese-Russian partnership. Mm that was announced 20 days before. They've been very transparent. Their goal is to eliminate the West and to allow themselves to be, you know, the leaders of the world. And we have to start stepping up and being smart. This is not the time to be soft. This is not the time to wonder what America is going to look like when she grows up. This is the time for us mm. to lead. And the world wants us to lead. And they're not getting that under Biden. And that's the part that makes people nervous. And that's the part that we have to change. Well, where is it going to come from? Because as you just pointed out, Russia's on the move. I'll get to China in a moment. But Estonia yesterday let the world know that Russia violated its airspace for the very first time by flying a helicopter over its territory. So that's not at a very high altitude. The move was definitely seen as provocative as Estonia is a NATO member. And the country's defense ministry says this is the picture of the threat, how we see the Russian threat. It has never been as serious as it is now. Ambassador. Harris, this is a war we have to win. This is not just about Ukraine and Russia. This is about the fact that if this is a war on freedom, if we don't help Ukraine finish this. This will be the beginning of a lot of those. We have to fight this as much as we can. They're not asking for troops. I don't think we should write blank checks. But if they say they need long range missiles, give them long range missiles. If they need planes, give them planes. Let them fight this war and let them win. Because if they don't win, if Russia is able to gain territory, China will move on Taiwan. Russia will move on Poland and the Baltics. This will not end. And we have to make sure that we're on the side of freedom. Now countries around the world, they're having to take a side. Do they take the side of Russia and China or do they take the side of the U.S. and the West? They're going to take the side of the one they think can win. Uh -huh. Does the U.S. and the West look like we can win? Do we act like we can win? Are we making the moves to show that we can win? I don't think we are. That's what has to change. That's the difference. When we do that, we will have more countries with us. When we have more countries with us and we show strength, we will prevent further wars. But until that happens, there, you're going to continue to see aggression by Russia. You're going to continue to see aggression by China. You're going to continue to see Iran move forward mm -hmm. on nuclear production and North Korea continue to cause problems. Everybody jumps in the pool if they think the shark's not there. That's right. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Uh, just real quickly, China sent 29 warplanes into Taiwan's airspace. That's this week. Uh, well, it, and it's part of what you're saying. And, and well, yeah, the shark and is gone. The, the shark's on the Ukraine, beach in Delaware, right? so apparently. Why did China do that? They're trying to make a move on, 
on uh, Taiwan. The best thing we could do is let's get in front of the situation. Let's send Taiwan the training for their military. Let's send Taiwan and work with our allies to get them the equipment that they need. Let's not do it alone. Let's right. do it with our friends. But let's all stand there behind Taiwan so much so that China doesn't even think about making a move. The mistake with Ukraine well, was it was too it. little too late. Don't wait until it's too late when it costs us more money and more time and more weapons and more sacrifices. Let's get in front of it so we never have to deal with that in the first place. My opening question, is this the president to get that done? All right, let's move. A group that's working to elect more Republican women to Congress says its women candidates are the key to a Republican majority next year. We're going to scroll them here because there are so many of them. Winning for Women Action Fund has endorsed more than 20 candidates so far this election cycle, and it's already seen success in a number of races this year, including Monica De La Cruz in Texas, Katie Britt in Alabama just last night. I have been with you when you have talked about women's issues and getting in politics. Tell me about this latest trend, where you see it's going. Well, it's an exciting time. You know, we are seeing women really step out and say enough. You know, there are no women's issues. There are all issues. Women care about American national issues. security. They care about how they're going to feed their families and what their wallets look like. Women care about education. Women care about crime. Women care about the overall strength of our country. And what we're seeing is some amazing women step up um, and amazing women win. You know, 11 out of the 15 seats in 2020 that we flipped were won by women. We now have more participation by women in this country than we've ever had. And we're seeing more Republican women step up. And that's the key, because Republican women are stepping up against cancel culture. They're stepping up against the wokest um, culture that's trying to take place. They're stepping up for parents. They're stepping up for security. They're stepping up to reduce crime. And they're stepping up and they're winning. And Republican women are going to make sure that we turn this country around.